Welcome to all of you on our channel that is GYAS. So in today's video we will be discussing the topic about the language policy in India. So recently friends uh, the draft national education policy was released by uh, Ministry of Human Resources and Development. So in that case uh, there was a controversy there there ensued a controversy after the release of it because there it was a, there was a mandate uh, there was a clause uh, that uh, talked about promotion of Hindi in all over India. So specifically as you know that from southern states um, as is the case earlier also the opposition the staunch opposition came and the southern, uh, southern Indian states uh, especially Tamil Nadu uh, uh, launched a stro uh, strong protest. So in this, in that scenario, uh, then the draft national education policy was revised, and uh, again the new draft was issued in in which that clause, which made it mandatory for, uh, to promote Hindi in non-Hindi states, was removed. So here in this video, uh, we will be discussing that uh, <clears throat> why why. India should promote Hindi or why it should not or whether uh, it, India should promote Hindi or English. So why the uh, southern states uh, kind we can say uh, oppose and also why uh, the uh, northern Indian states why they are talking of promoting Hindi. So all uh, all these answers will be uh, uh, kind of sold uh, given here in this in this video. So let's uh, uh, start discussion. So friends uh, before starting let's see what is the controversy as I have told you since independence this controversy is not new uh, this controversy has time and again surfaced from uh, 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 whenever there is a kind of we can say uh, uh, any step taken by the central government to promote Hindi so since in independence there is a dilemma among the Indian policy makers that whether we should promote a common language which could become as a lingua franca among the diverse people of this land. So as you know that India is a diverse country so multiple uh, people with, uh, uh, with different languages, uh, with different religions, with different culture uh, they live here. So here the, uh, the controversy has in that relation uh, or kind of we can say dilemma is in that relation has always been in the minds of policy makers. So, uh, if the constitution under part, part 17, uh, uh, it talks about promoting Hindi as a link language and also it recognizes in Hindi as the uh, official language of uh, uh, government of India, then opposition from non-Hindi states uh, kind of uh, uh, hinders this project of promoting Hindi. So, let me clarify before uh, proceeding that it is not the case that, uh, uh, that uh, Hindi is the national language. Hindi is just an official language of central uh, government that is government of India. So what does it mean? It means it, it uses Hindi in its communication with, uh, with uh, any of the uh, agency or for that matter with the citizens. So uh, th there is a lot of difference between official language and uh, national language. So Hindi is official language as of now and there is a talk of promotion of Hindi. So let's see reasons for promoting Hindi. What should be the reasons? So friends, uh, uh, the reasons for promoting Hindi are many like uh, we can say uh, English is a symbol of colonial domination. So whenever Hindi is promoted, so uh, southern states say okay, when we are able to communicate with you people with, in English, then what is the problem? Why we should should adopt Hindi when we are fluent in English why should we go for Hindi so uh, so there is a, a point of view that uh, English is a symbol of colonial dom domination that is we inherited English from our British uh, colonial masters but now uh, uh, as uh, we be, uh, as we uh, we achieved independence uh, we decided to free all walks of our life from this uh, colonial domination so English is a, is a symbol so Hindi is a basically and in uh, uh, in, in direct opposite Hindi is a symbol of national pride so here uh, the uh, there is a point of view of national pride and the second uh, thing that is uh, uh, said is that uh, there is a special directive to the government of India under article 351 to promote Hindi so there is no ambiguity in this provision because constitution directly uh, uh, directs government of India to promote Hindi as a lingua franca or link, link language or we can say common language so uh, the third point is that that Hindi 
Hindi is not just spoken in India, it is also spoken in other parts of the world. For example, countries like Fiji, Mauritius, Nepal, uh, uh, our neighboring countries, many countries use Hindi uh, in communication. So, uh, we are making also, friends, the fourth point is that we are also making efforts to get Hindi recognized as official language at UN. So, United, at the United Nations, our ambassadors are working towards that, uh, uh, towards that, that Hindi uh, can be recognized as an official language of the world. So, it's more usage in India will only add to its stature. So, if we use it in, in India, then obviously uh, we will have a kind of moral stand to uh, promote, uh, 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 kind of we can say, promote our efforts to get Hindi recognized as official language. So, also other thing is that uh, we are only the uh, we are the only country where majority of population speaks Hindi. So, uh, if uh, in if, uh, when when uh, near about 55% of the people in India speak uh, Hindi, then uh, if India will not promote Hindi, then who will? Because only India is the country that uh, that has majority of population speaking in Hindi. And sixth thing is that that Hindi is, uh, if it, is, it, it becomes a link language, then it will promote national integration and will keep uh, issues like communalism, regionalism and separatism uh, at a distance. We can say that uh, issues uh, like uh, national integration uh, the, the promotion of national integration will keep the issues uh, uh, at the back door, the issues like communalism, regionalism and separatism. So the, these are the uh, are few reasons for promoting Hindi. Then uh, uh, we also have to look on the other side of the coin. So here the other side of the coin is that one must remember that India is a land of diversity. So as you know that India is a multilingual, multicultural society and there are many issues that come to fore uh, due to this diverse nature of India. So first thing is that uh, non-Hindi states might see this as an imposition of Hindi on them. So uh, there is no question of might, there is, certainly they see imposition of Hindi uh, on them when, when there is a talk of promoting Hindi. And also friends, uh, the other point that is noticeable is that uh, Supreme Court in Karnataka versus unaided uh, 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 schools recognized unaided schools. It held that uh, uh, the uh, the government uh, cannot even impose the mother tongue on a child. So if a child uh, has a particular mother tongue, and uh, it is uh, it is said by Supreme Court that even if uh, 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 even if, if a particular language is the mother tongue of a child, and if in case he doesn't want to read that or want to learn that, then it uh, then it cannot be imposed on the uh, on the child. So it is a, a because the Supreme Court held that it will, it will be a kind of violation of his fundamental right under Article 19, sub clause 1, which, which comes under your freedom of expression. So third thing is that purpose of common language is to bridge communities. So obviously if we are saying that we must have a common link language, then we uh, the purpose of uh, ours is to promote national integration. So uh, in basically to bridge communities. But if that, the, this leads to kind of barriers between in, in North India and uh, Northern India and Southern India. India, uh, then then certainly it is not desirable because we first the prime importance is national integration and not Hindi so national interest must be served and uh, uh, it may be served with Hindi or uh, without Hindi so in which whichever manner it is served we must serve that interest so it is not necessary that only Hindi will uh, will uh, uh, kind of serve national interest other thing is that English has become a universal language. So if uh, we say that it is a colonial language, then it would be wrong because uh, English is not just a colonial language. Now it has become a universal language with every international institution and majority of the countries, they transacting their business in English. So uh, in that case, ignoring English will kind of uh, uh, kind of cre create a pro problem for Indians also that are uh, that are that will be going abroad as well as the two, uh, it will have it will have impact on our human resources. So other thing is that uh, that if we dump uh, dump it in the project of promoting Hindi, that is uh, uh, if we uh, put forward the argument that uh, Hindi must be promoted because uh, Hindi is uh, important than English, then uh, one must know that uh, in India there uh, uh, the rich students they they the rich sections of the society what they do they send their children to private institutions. So there the on, on private institution one cannot uh, impose uh, uh, um, uh, the uh, the, the government cannot impose its uh, instructions. So in, in any case, the rich section of the society will be getting educated in English. So in that case, uh, only the poor will, will get affected because in government schools, 
basically the poor go poor section of society go and uh, the students uh, will not be able to learn english and th that will further harm the prospects of our al already suffering poor section of indian society so this is also a very co convincing argument and the other argument is that english is also somewhat neutral in indian context so if we see in indian context then it is somewhat neutral but hindi or any other language for say for example tamil or malayalam for, or uh, telugu they they have a sense of identity attached with, uh, with it so here we can say that english has a, a, a kind of neutrality vis-a-vis -vis other languages uh, other Indi indigenous indian languages other thing is that friends uh, in article 344 sub clause 3 uh, it has been clearly mentioned in the constitution uh, in the article 344 uh, sub clause 3 of the constitution of india uh, that uh, that it, it 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 imposes a kind of condition on the language policy of government of india so it clearly says that uh, if uh, if if the if the uh, purpose of uh, this language policy is basic uh, uh, is, is, so it, it uh, sorry sorry uh, i i misread it so it clearly imposes a condition that uh, any language policy that is coming uh, uh, into existence or, or is formulated it must have due regard for the industrial cultural as well as scientific advancement of India so obviously we must uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, catch up with the other world also because uh, uh, today's uh, 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 time is very uh, changing uh, is changing very fast so we can't afford to uh, remain uh, we can say uh, remain developing country for so long so we have to remove that ta uh, tag we have to provide employment to our billion of um, uh, uh, 1.25 uh, billion people and also we have to solve their problems so in that context industrial cultural and scientific advancement of india is important so as you know that the majority of literature uh, whether you uh, see in sci uh, science and technology or whether you see in other areas of interest the, uh, the majority of literature is available in English only. So if we promote any other indigenous language by dumping English, then it will only harm our, uh, only kind of we can say uh, uh, harm our interest and the interest of our human resource. So uh, the, our human resource, uh, the India's human resource must also have proficiency in English as well. So this is the other side of the coin. Uh, when we see one side of the coin, it also seems uh, influencing. And when we see other side, then it is also influencing. So the uh, what should be the conclusion? So the conclusion, basically, uh, I have not uh, uh, provided a detailed conclusion. You can see that uh, simple, uh, uh, I, will, I will cite uh, you here an example of history that uh, in 1918, the, the Gandhi ji, that is Mohandas Karamchal Gandhi, the father, father of nation, he founded Dakshin Bharat Hindi Prachar Sabha. So what was the purpose of this Dakshin Bharat Hindi Prachar Sabha? The purpose was to promote Hindi in the region. But the very important and uh, we can say innovative feature of this organization or Sabha was that uh, the, uh, the regional people from South India itself volunteered to to kind of promote Hindi in the region uh, among the uh, among their fellow uh, uh, fellow citizens. So in this way, uh, this approach kind of we can say if someone volunteers or someone uh, volunteers to teach or for example we can say someone volunteers to learn Hindi, then it should be promoted. Any kind of imposition will will be kind of counterproductive to India's interest also as well as uh, to the interest of these region, uh, regions as well. So such kind of in, uh, approach will uh, have more impact in promoting Hindi rather than any haste which may lead to hardening of attitudes and promotion of regions. So we must uh, kind of take steps in a very very gradual and in a very we can say uh, thoughtful manner so that uh, anything is not imposed on the people but people happily accept that. So if you make people influence then that, uh, the, nothing is uh, good, good or we can say best than that. So this is all about friends today's video. If you like this video, if you like the discussion, then do ensure that you like our video and share it with your friends and also ensure that you subscribe to our channel do, and do not forget to press the bell icon because then only you will get all the notifications relating to updates that we do on our channel. So this is our channel it's EYS. If you have any query, you can contact us at this number. This is 8968920720. So our email ID is EYS21 at the rate gmail.com and our website link is www.achieveyes.co.in so if you have any queries if you want to enroll uh, if you want to enroll our courses then you can visit our website and can join us so thank you friends have a very nice day